Welcome to the latest edition of our Seafood News Weekly video brought to you by Erner Berry's Seafood Import Workshop. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Amanda Buckle. And I'm Nicole Christie. Let's kick things off with a look at the top seafood stories from around the globe. A fishing vessel in Florida learned the hard way that they must familiarize themselves with national marine sanctuary boundaries. The Ronald E., a 68-foot fishing vessel, was boarded by the U.S. Coast Guard and NOAA near a shrimp sanctuary late last week for a fisheries and safety regulations compliance check. The Coast Guard and NOAA discovered that the vessel was illegally fishing inside a national marine sanctuary and seized approximately 6,000 pounds of shrimp, worth an estimated $60,000. Coast Guard Captain Jeffrey Jansen said that the boaters and fishermen should familiarize themselves with the boundaries of the sanctuary to make sure they're complying with federal law. To piggyback on that story, another Floridian is facing charges after illegally dumping lobster traps. Florida Keys commercial fishing captain Ricardo Hernandez was arrested last week after a two-year-long investigation investigation by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. Back in 2016, the FWC discovered that the fishing captain's crew was working unlicensed traps. When FWC officers returned to the site, they discovered that the traps were gone. An employee later told authorities that Hernandez ordered them to cut the traps, making it impossible for FWC to locate them from the surface. Divers ultimately found them and Hernandez was booked for 31 felony counts for commercial dumping and an additional 33 felony counts for tampering with evidence. Let's leave Florida alone for now. <laughs> in Japan, the sale of five packages of blowfish meat at a local supermarket forced the city of Gamagori to activate an emergency warning system that's usually used for earthquakes and other disasters. The fish is known as fugi and can be deadly if mishandled. The supermarket included the fish's highly toxic liver, which could have contaminated the other meat. The health ministry used the emergency warning in order to recall the packages. Thanks, Nicole. In our final story of the day, a professor at UMass Dartmouth School for Marine Science Technology estimates that across the Northeast, approximately 300 jobs were lost within the first 30 days of the Sector 9 shutdown. However, Seafood News publisher John Sackton says that the figure is based on an economic model and inflates the impact of the short-term action. The 300 lost job numbers was created by looking at the volume and value of what Sector 9 vessels delivered to the Whaling City Display Auction from November 20th to December 20th of 2016, and as soon as the sector was still operating, they would land the same amount this year. You can find John's full analysis on SeafoodNews.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. But before we wrap up our show, I just want to remind our viewers that if you can't get enough of us, you can also listen to us. New episodes of the Seafood News podcast are posted to iTunes and SoundCloud every Monday. Down the latest one to listen to on your way down to Miami for the Global Seafood Market Conference. This video is sponsored by Erna Berry's Seafood Import Workshop, which is heading to Los Angeles on February 8th of 2018. The Seafood Import Workshop touches on seafood safety, quality, and sustainability compliance, as well as USDA inspection of Pangasius, the Seafood Import Monitoring Program, FISMA and HACCP tracking requirements, and much more. Space is limited. For more information, visit earnerberry.com backslash SIW or call 1-800-932-0617.